Oh, oh goodness. It has been a day. So we are live on Facebook. All right. So hello, everyone. This is Shelly Willis coming to you live via Zoom live stream. And um, we have been on a journey this month or last month going into June and y'all it's June already. And I just have to tell you, um, this has been a very, very, very I think, uh, heavy and impactful week for a lot of us, but we did not want to um, stop what we were doing um, and, and not provide a space where we could continue to have the conversations we were having in May and bringing before you great content, great guests, great partners who we um, have been built, built really great relationships with. So with that being said, I just want to introduce to you Roy Sue. And uh, Roy, uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself as far as his background and everything, but just know that tonight's topic is all around business owners with COVID in mind, and we're going to get into several different talking points. We're going to hopefully be able to have enough time to cover the economy, branding, relationships, what is the new normal, or is there any such thing as a new normal when you're thinking about your business? Um, and what do you want to, what does the future look like for you? A lot, I know a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs are making decisions to close their doors. They're not seeing a way forward, but I, you know, if you're a futuristic thinker, I think this is an opportunity for you to be able to dig in, get your hands in the dirt, get gritty with it and make some, you know, even though you have to pivot, um, find a way to still be able to keep things going. So Roy, thank you for joining us. Yep. Thank you, so, uh, thank you so much for the invite. So it's an honor to be here. Um, so uh, let me start by saying, uh, you know, it's it's great. Uh, everyone who has their own business, it's a great feeling when you when you do something and you you own it. Uh, this is just unprecedented times. Yeah. Let's just be honest. It is completely unprecedented. Yeah. So you know, wanted want to. Um, Hmm. It's not allowing me to share. Oh. <laughs> because technology is not our friend. <laughs> Did you have some slides or anything? Well, I think uh, I, I know we're, I know we're having some of these uh, very interesting. Um, okay, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Okay. So a little bit about me. So. I think we're losing, we lost you, Roy. Yeah, I think we lost him. Um, so we're gonna give Roy some time to come back um, and uh, introduce himself. I don't know what's going on, but I just know that technology sometimes is not our friend. I don't know about anybody else, but today has definitely been one of those days. Um, Hopefully he can get back on and we can get him, um, get our conversation started around business ownership with COVID in mind. And um, just kind of want to give you some background and context. We've been doing, we've been running different series for a minute. And um, in those series, we've had several conversations. And one of the areas that we always cover in our blueprint project is the area of finances. And we usually have um, multiple um uh, in you know, guests and insights. Uh, one of our main speakers on this area is Audrey Godwin. Um, oh, I am a uh, financial. Right, and uh, Roy is uh, as he's trying to get back into the call. <laughs> Are you back, Roy? We're trying to get him back into the call. He also is someone that we met and comes from a very. Uh, vast financial background. So I see you again, Roy, I see you now. All right, sorry about that. Just a little technical hiccup there. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, so I was kind of uh, briefly trying to introduce you to the world, but go ahead and take over and, re and introduce yourself. Okay, sorry, sorry about that guys, everyone. All right, so I'm a financial advisor, um, but uh, you know, prior to being a financial advisor, I spent about seven years freelancing, um, uh, 15 years overall. I was a, uh, and I did that as a creative 
Uh, I was a creative director in New York working in advertising. I've been, uh, I also had a photography side business. Um, you know, so I kind of know what it needs, to, uh, you need to take to kind of own and run your own business. Uh, in addition to that, some of the things that I, I do now, um, you know, I, I do speak around uh, a town. I, I lecture at uh, some of the local universities. Um, I also mentor in entrepreneurs and also an angel investor for those who don't know that term. I am one of the people in the city that's actually helping to fund startups personally and trying to get that mo uh, in, in motion. So uh, with that process, you know, we uh, angel investors tend to be very hands-on working with the entrepreneurs, trying to help them uh, move along. So in, from anything from looking at the marketing to the budget sheets to the positioning. So, you know, the entrepreneur space is something that I've just been in involved with for a very long time. Now, before we get along, uh, move further, I mean, I think it's just as always important uh, to recognize everything that's been going on in the world today. And, you know, Black Lives Matter. So it's uh, during this time, it's, it's so much more important just to connect with people. And, you know, as with COVID and everything that's going on, there's just a lot of stress and I know that there was a lot of stress for people. So it's, you know, just whatever we can do to reach out, create the connections, create community. And the community is so important because ultimately your business is a community. Who are your customers? Why did they come to you? Right? So let's talk about COVID a bit. Now, this is just complete unprecedented. The economy is just starting to open but we're talking about social distancing and no matter what you hear out in the world, the chances of them getting a vaccine in a short amount of time is pretty small. And even if they do, um, the chances that that vaccine, maybe it's not 100% effective. Maybe it's not safe enough for broad use. Uh, I spent 10 years in pharmaceutical advertising and these things can happen. There are vaccines for conditions that simply cannot be used on a broad uh, spectrum basis because of these things. And so when we think about what's going on, that COVID could come back in the fall, they could come back every year, it could mutate. This new normal of social distancing could be around with us for quite some time. In addition to that, it's important to know that, you know, the government uh, has been putting a lot of money in with the PPP program and all of these things, but some of those programs are going to end. And at that point in time, that's when some of the layoffs are going to happen. So some of the effects haven't yet started yet. So I want everyone to think about that because when we think about what you need to do with your, um, your, your company and your, uh, we have to think about the fact that this could be a really long-term endeavor and a lot of things are just going to permanently change. Okay. The first thing I would uh, ask everyone is, you know, I want to talk about your personal brand. What do you want to stand for? What do why to, and ultimately the most important question is, why do people want to work with you? Or why do people want to do business with you? Now, I have a saying that if you're trying to create your brand by saying that, uh, you know, your product or you, you're going to be the best, you're going to be the, a really hard worker, or you can do something that's cheaper, you basically branded yourself as completely replaceable. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, and why is that though? Yeah. Now, think about it as a customer and think about it as someone, uh, I was in a hiring position, I had a staff of 15 in my last career. The thing is, is that when you, uh, when jobs are limited, and you have something to give, who do you want to give to first? You want to give it to people that you know, you like, that you trust, mm -hmm. and you also want to help out. Right. And that's about relationships. And so, you know, if you're just focused on quote unquote your work and not focused on why someone actually likes you as a person, mm -hmm. it's a losing endeavor because you become a commodity. There's no reason for someone to have loyalty to you. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, 
again, people do business with people they know and trust. So when you talk about your brand, right? And depending on what you do, there's two parts. There's the tangible and the intangible. The tangible is things like, you know, how much does it cost? What is the actual product? How is, what's the quality of the product? Now, these are all, there's a certain level you have to get into just to get someone's interest, right? Uh, you know, if someone's looking for in a car like an Audi, they're going to want to make sure that it's at least at that quality. But then at the same time, let's be honest, no matter what business you're in, um, there's plenty of competitions. And I always think about what I do. If someone just wanted to look for a financial advisor, there's, <laughs> there's like a, hundreds of them that, that uh, you'll find if you go look up financial advisor Seattle. Mm. Why would someone want to work with me? Mm. And so the tangible may get your initial interest at saying, okay, this person does this or you, this person sells this, but it has to be the intangible that's going to make them turn into a customer and create the loyalty. And the intangibles are things like, what's your personality? What are your values? And do you relate? Uh, does your product or you as a person, if you are the product, relate mm -hmm. to the person that potentially wants to buy from you? And that creates your reputation, right? Wow. And that is what's going to create loyalty. Not just because you do the best. Because oftentimes, like, I hear this a lot where people say, oh, I want to be the best at something. You're never going to be the best at something. Even if you were, it's going to be a sliver of time before someone else is better. And then, mm -hmm. then what? Right? And uh, we all know the stories of the people who are at the top. And when they're at the top, people put up with kind of their yeah. BS. Yes. And then when they're not at the top anymore, no one wants to work with them. <laughs> right. 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 But yeah. And it's like your yeah. behavior equals your brand. So your behavior equals your brand, which also, you know, creates that, 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 I guess that fragmented way that you have created relationships because nine times out of 10, you probably damaged the rate, you know, those, those types of, you know, uh, relationships that you normally would have valued, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, there's, uh, you know, in, if your business is kind of in the consulting world, right. And you are your product, uh, ultimately, you might have got a job done and you maybe got a job done well, uh -huh. but if no one on that team wanted to work with you. They're not going to call you back. Uh -huh. So you can have the highest quality work, but it's a one-time thing. Wow. And that's how you're running your business. It is all, it, it, that is tiring. Constantly trying to get a new customer every single time versus having the same customers come back to you over and over again. Yeah. You want, re you want return customers. You want the people to come back and, and you know how they say, you know, you know, like, you know, everyone has like this moniker or this thing that people will, will remember you from. And also the fact that people, they say they always remember like how you make people feel is what they're going to remember most. And it's usually going to play into their customer experience when it comes to them using, exactly. you know, yeah, coming to your business, they're shopping for you, they're looking for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've always said this, it's like, and you never want to compete on price alone. You don't want to price yourself out on the market, but mm -hmm. if your only value is your price, the mm -hmm. people who value that will go to the next cheapest thing when it comes along. Mm. You don't want to constantly be chasing that type of customer because that type of customer is flighty. Wow. They're not, you can't rely on them. No. And, and I would say in my business, like I'm not, I'm not the cheapest. I'm not the most expensive. I'm totally in the middle. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, the, when I talk to people, when they're so concerned about price, I know it's not going to be a good relationship because what I provide is value. And if someone's just looking at the bottom line, you, there's the saying, you get what you pay for. Well, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, if it costs that much less, there's got to be a reason it costs so much less. So I got a question. So, you know, we have a lot of people that I know, they are entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs. And um, there's been a lot of conversation, of course, even before COVID, about how people feel as though um, family, friends, people close to them don't value their, you know, their, you know, their business. They always want something for free. I always call it, you know, like 
uh, okay. you know, cookie for free. You know, it's the cookie for free. Like, you know, you can get one free cookie or you can go to Krispy Kreme when the, the light is on and you get one free donut. But, um, I, you know, I have to say, you know, if your business was already struggling, you got to really think hard about whether or not, you know, you get upset too because they don't have any value. They don't put any value on what the service you provide until it is something that they need. And then they don't want to, they want you to give them the discount, the friends discount, the friends and family discount. And so, and if you get, if you get to the point to where that's what you're doing, then you might find yourself in a space where you're not, um, you're undervaluing, like you said, undervaluing yourself, underselling yourself. You're a walking product. You're a walking brand. How do you, what advice do you have for all of my entrepreneurs out here who are trying to make it that, you know, their business may or may not be on hold. I mean, I know a lot of um, entrepreneurs who are consultants and this might be a sweet space for them, but how do they not out, you know, like price themselves out, but don't undersell themselves? Okay. Two things. Number one, I'm just going to say something flat out that I learned uh, early on. Do not prospect with your friends and family. So when you're starting a business, don't try to just don't start your business by building it from friends and family. So a couple of things, frankly, if it's something completely new, maybe you start it, you think that you like it and then you don't. You don't want to be that person that just got them in when you just started this new career and then you left because it didn't work out. Sometimes that happens. Right? So right. don't do that in the beginning, number one. And number two, um, you know, if, if someone's really asking for discounts, uh, it, you know, I have, I have some friends and family as clients, don't get me wrong, but they approached me. I did not approach them. And I made sure it was after a while I, I, I've been doing business. The second thing, if someone's really asking for a discount, I think it's time to be just polite about it and just say, you know, I'm really concentrating on uh, uh, clients that are paying uh, the full price because I have to. I'm building a business right now. Maybe I can do it later and hopefully they'll get the hint. <laughs> so, um, but I just want to make sure all my entrepreneurs hear that. I want to make sure they feel that. He's, the key yeah. thing that stood out to me is, you know, one of the things, especially for some of these different types of multi-level marketing businesses or things like that, call, you know, you've got a list of friends or family or whatever you're calling, you're trying to get people to, you know, um, listen to your business plan, what you're going to do, how you want to build your business. And um, I guess in some instances, depending on the type of business you start, um, not approaching friends and family family to invest in your business um, or to, to, you know, build, in other words, build your business first before you start even operating with what I consider to be what's supposed to be your inner circle of, of uh, friends and family. You don't want to be known as the person who goes to the family picnic that everyone avoids because uh, they're like, oh, that person's trying to sell me something. <laughs> It's true. You don't want to be that person. No, you do it's not just... want to be that person. <laughs> and and I'll tell and I'll tell you something too. It's like if your business is about sales and things like that, um, there's a comfort level when you go to friends and family. We all get that. Mm -hmm. The toughest thing is to go to people you don't know. Mm -hmm. You want to go aim for the tough one, not the easy part. Right. Not the low hanging fruit to sell. Yeah. And, and I will, I'll get in a little bit about the networking and, and how you approach that in, in a little bit, but, you know, just flat out, I just say, just don't go with friends and family um, for a while. Trying to build your business. Okay. Yeah. At least a year okay. or two. So what about in this moment right now, this post COVID moment? I don't even know if we can call it post COVID. I don't ever, I don't think we were post anything, uh, but uh, in this moment, where the, you know, things are, are, are very uncertain, uncertain. What is your advice and um, recommendations for right now? Yeah, all right. There's a couple of things. First of all, we live in a very polarized world and I wanna talk a little bit about social media <laughs> because guess what? When someone's trying to look at your business, right? And you're going out there and you're trying to market yourself. This is really important that you, uh, people don't dissociate your personal social media from your professional social media. Wow. So if someone's going to do business with you, particularly as a consultant, guess what? They're going to go on your face, personal Facebook page and think, 
is this a person that I like? Mm. You know, there's a, there's a little um, statistic in my industry that 25% of people decide not to work with a financial advisor because something that they saw on their personal Facebook page. Wow. So are you the person that's trying to, on LinkedIn, trying to portray a very professional um, persona and then Facebook posting who knows what? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? You know, even if you're looking at a job, guess what happens? You're in an interview and they tell you to pull up your Facebook page and they're looking at these things. Yeah. So you have to be conscious about that. So yeah. that's number one. So the first thing is go through your social media, anything that's public. Is this what you want your customers or your employers to look at? Right. If they did, would it be okay? That's number one. Number two, um, the, here's the other thing about branding. It's also, you know, do someone want to, does someone want to work with you? Do we do share the same values? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a, there was a little posting on, on LinkedIn that I, I, <laughs> I pers personally kind of liked. It was about um, Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And this woman posted, uh, let me read this. To the companies, I'm not, I am not applauding your hashtag Black Lives Matters posts. I want to see pictures of your executive leadership team, company board. I want to see your HR sanctions against microaggressions. I want to read about your diversity guidelines, uh, promotion policies, et cetera. Right. So here's the other thing is like, if you're going to try to portray something uh -huh. on uh, social media for your company, uh, you better be able to back it up. Someone could call you out. Right, right, <laughs> right. 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 And you make, yeah. you you really are. I always tell everybody I'm, I'm an ambassador to anything attached to me. And so you, you really should be able to see me across all platforms. Consistently. Like, equally. Like there shouldn't be anything that you see on any of my social media platforms that makes you think, wow, you know, Oh, you know, I, you know, at some point the lines become blurred and you're like living and breathing your brand, you, you know, and that's exactly. what you are. You're, you're living and breathing your brand. I mean, I heard one time Facebook was for your brand. Instagram was meant to be like your private place. Everybody doesn't get to see Instagram um, and Twitter. Like, you know, LinkedIn, of course, was professional. And then I'm just like, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that no, at all. Not anymore. Because even if you have something private, guess what? Some employers, they, they call you in and they say, log in, we want to see it now. Right. That's what, that's what happened in this day. And there, it's perfectly legal. Yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy Wimberly said that. employers look too. Um, they ask you for your links on um, your on your page. They ask you for that. On, and, and I've not heard of that, but that's very interesting. You know, hey, can you go on now and log on and pull up all of your social media pages, every platform you have? Yeah. And so definitely look through it, figure out, um, you know, is it consistent? And if you're going to make, uh, uh, if you're going to make any comments about, you know, political issues, you know that that's where you stand. You're going to alienate some people. You may attract other people. Obviously, you don't want to do something that alienates everyone. <laughs> um, right. But at some point in time, that may also be okay, right? Mm -hmm. um, you now, know. Uh, now, real quick, now Jimmy works for the state, so the state may not do that. But does private, in, like government agencies, may not make you pull up your private agencies? Media, can. But private industry can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the difference. And I, I've heard of it, but I just haven't seen anybody do it. But um, if you work in like for state, for government, they can't make yeah. you do it at an interview. But I know of private companies that can, or they'll go and they'll troll you. They'll find out. Oh, yeah. Uh, the private, uh, you know, the, the, uh, and it's an important distinction to, to make private companies, public companies, two very different entities in terms of the rules. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yes, that's good. Jimmy says you are a walking brand every day. Yes. <laughs> you are. And and thinking about your brand and here's the thing is like if you're a consultant or you're selling your product, the other thing about how you portray yourself is what however you portray yourself is also going to be the type of clients that you attract. Right. Think about this. Who do you want to attract? Mm -hmm. Right? 
And that's where you can also start thinking about how you want to brand yourself. Because, you know, I'm okay. Like, uh, here's a perfect example. Like, you know, love it or hate it, Chick-fil-A, all right? I don't eat at Chick-fil-A. I have decided I am not going to eat at Chick-fil-A. It does not represent my values, even mm -hmm. though the sandwiches really do rock. <laughs> yes, they do. They do. <laughs> they do. They do. But I made that. I made that decision. But they made the decision that is their brand, and then they have their following. Right. So, you know, that's on one end. Mm -hmm. So, on your on the other end, you know, then there's the people who, um, you know have different values, what are they going to uh, portray them that? They're going to stand by it and take a look at Nike. Nike with um, Colin Kaepernick on, mm -hmm. on the campaign. They right. alienated quite a few people that are, could have been their clients, but mm -hmm. they made a stance on that's who they are. They're mm -hmm. more than a shoe company. Right. So wherever you are on the spectrum, you need to make that decision and if that's who you are, that is also going to be the type of customer you're going to attract, right. not just if they're interested in your product. Right. So let's talk about the economy. Let's talk mm -hmm. economics. Um, you're a numbers guy. I love saying that. I love <laughs> to say that every time we meet. You're a numbers guy. Um, you're, you make you you you've talked to me about how you talk to service members about how they should utilize uh, in their TSP and, and where their investments should go after service and all of this stuff. So let's talk about business and the economy. Your ec what's economics? Let's talk numbers. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's talk about that a bit. And here is the thing: um, before we get into numbers, like it, there's one important thing that everyone needs to know now. What is the new normal? Mm -hmm. Like I said, okay, this is unprecedented. We're going to social distancing is going to happen. And mm -hmm. when we talk about numbers in your business, the first thing you need to figure out is how does this affect your business? Right. Because some businesses, this everything with social distancing does not affect what uh, what it doesn't affect at all. And some industries, it that's it. It shut down, right? Okay. So the that's the first thing you need to figure out. And then you tr need to try to figure out how does this affect your business because maybe you've been able to get by with uh, some of the government programs, uh, but if you can't go back to business as normal before, right. then you're, you need to do something, right? And that's where you need to just assess how do you think it's gonna affect you, number one. And so the first question I would say that everyone needs to ask themselves is, is your service or product business, is it a must have or is it a nice to have? Because the nice to haves in a, in a recession are the first things to be cut. Right. Like cable. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, I say like Netflix is a must have right now. Right. Everyone's right. So I can live, but I can, as long as I have internet, I can live stream, I can access Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. Right. You pay enough for that every year. You actually get movies with that. So, you know, I don't need Xfinity for anything other than. <laughs> yeah exactly so trying to figure out like and you know are you a must-have you're a must-have if uh whatever you do is essential to the the operations of a company right you really save them more than they spend on on you or your product you know you support them in some sort of crucial way that that they need to uh continue like mental health for example right and you know, can you do this from home? Mm -hmm. Frankly, everyone's has to be a remote. If, if your work requires something in person, you know, that is a factor. Mm. Now, the other thing we've got to think about is who's your customer base? Are they in industries that's going to be affected more by COVID? So even though your essential service, if you're essential service to a nice to have client base, uh, then you're in trouble as well. Right. right? And you know the um, and this is this is the other thing. It's with every recession, unfortunately, de uh, depending on what uh, income bracket you're in, it affects people differently. And people in certain income brackets are going to be much uh, deeply affected 
just by the virtue. So, right. you know, this is not a judgment, but, you know, if your client base is someone, uh, a client base that is wealthier, chances are they're going to be more likely to afford your product even, or, or your service, even if two people had uh, do the exact same thing. So, uh, but, you know, those are all things that you need to think of. But one thing I would say, and this is something that happened to me. So, you know, I was a, um, I had my photography side of business for 15 years. And towards the end, I really didn't like it anymore. Okay. And I had all my friends, like not all my friends, but a lot of people came up to me and started um, saying, oh no, you should keep doing it. You should keep doing it. Because to them, it seemed really cool what I was doing. You know, I had stuff that was on in magazines. I, they like, you know, seen my photography everywhere, but I didn't personally like it. And, you know, when you're in certain uh, professions like that, where a lot of people think it must be so cool to work in, and they may actually be misguided in trying to promote you to keep doing it when mm. you have to be true to yourself. Do you like it anymore? Mm. And with COVID right now, if the answer is no, maybe this is just time to hang it up and this is your time to, time to move on as well. And think of, uh, is, it, is it more along the lines of thinking of another way for you to, um, you know, is it, is it a, it's a good time to like, re, like reinvent your business plan? Um, because you still want to be in business for yourself, but maybe you got to, you know, you, this didn't give people enough time to really think about what business looks like. And then um, I love that Jimmy is saying, you know, love your work, if not change it. Yes. Yes. And, and if you don't love your work, get some work that you do love. And that may yeah. be something completely different and that may be your pivot and that's okay. Yeah. 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 The other thing, and this is, a, this is a tougher thing to just think about right now too. And because for some people, some really tough decisions have to be made. Right. And you have to be honest with yourself by looking at, at your personal situation. Is this just simply too much risk for you? Is it better to quit now and come back later mm. or to continue? Or because, you know, if you have a house, for example, um, and your business is struggling and you don't think it's going to recover anytime soon. Right. Is it, is it simply better just to leave because you don't want you to lose your house? Like this is just, it, it's a tough decision because sometimes people, um, they do something for so long, they continue doing what they're doing and they don't think about this and they just stretch it out and then just get more and more debts. And then suddenly before they know it, they've lost everything. So in your financial part of your business plan, now you need to include crisis. You need yeah. to include um, what does a crisis budget plan look like for you? Is that something you would recommend for people? Yeah, you, you have to be really realistic about not just trying to survive till the next month, but is this sustainable for a year? Because if you just go month by month, oftentimes, and you're not taking time to think far ahead, Mm -hmm. If it's not sustainable a year from now, you've got to, you got to pivot somehow and right. just try to continue what you're doing is maybe do more harm than good. Okay. Those are good. And I mean, I think, I think that's just where people are right now. They probably, if some haven't already shut the doors to their business and they just realize with the regulatory guidelines or the, or the restrictions, it's just not going to make sense. And then for even for the restaurant industry that they're taking the key yeah. change because it's really costing more, you know, you're losing money. Money's just running out the door um, based off of how you can have people come in and enjoy your food and how many people can be in there. And you have to weigh that against all of the um, operational and administrative costs. So this is really, this has been really, really good. Really, really good. I, I, I'm, I'm just wondering also with the current civil unrest and the direction that we are going as a country um globally is a is a world is the you know as we're going as a nation what decisions people are going to be making as far as um their financial well-being um in the businesses that they own um 
uh, there's a lot of economic power behind brown and black dollars. So yes, if is. those brown and black dollars shift, that could mean something for some major brands, you know, that are especially uh, very urbanized. Uh, that could mean some things. So. So, and, and I will say this, like you mentioned the restaurant work, you know, I, I have uh, someone in one of my networking groups, catering company, right? Clearly catering has just been decimated. And in fact, the largest client, Microsoft, no more um, events for two years. Wow. They've already, they've already years? stated that. Two years, two years. So if that was your client, I mean, basically just gone, right? So with that, at some point in time, you have to say like people are people cannot cater because people can't have large events, and this may go on for a year. What do you do? This is the point that you have to figure out how to pivot. She has turned into a um, meal delivery service. You can get some gourmet dinners at your home that's right. delivered, so you can enjoy it with your family. That's how she shifted. And everyone needs to start thinking about that because she went from now her business completely affected and right. it was a nice, uh, like a nice to have, right. Right? right? And she's trying to, she pivoted to, you know, families, they need some uh, time by themselves. They, they, like, I know I don't have time to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Uh, you but, don't? <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's where everyone now starts thinking, you cannot just simply do business as normal. What can you do that changes things that makes it easier for someone to do business with you? And the easiest things for a lot of them is, you know, can you go online Yeah. somehow? Yeah. You know, I, I've talked to um, physical th uh, trainers. They're doing all Zoom trainings now. Right. The gyms are closed. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Yoga teachers are doing the same thing, mm -hmm. right? And so, if you can somehow provide the service that way, you're going to be able to uh, pivot, right? Um, now, the the other thing is, depending on what you do, do you need to cut your prices? Uh, like, and again, you don't want to compete only on price, mm -hmm. but sometimes you have to do something if everyone else is doing it. And right. the only way to do that is to figure out, can you cut some of your own costs so that when you cut your price, you're still it doesn't, it doesn't get you hard. It doesn't exactly. get you hard. Yeah. Because I, I've seen cases where someone cuts their price and and they don't realize that um, they they actually cut all the profits, so they can't ever make money based on what they're doing. Wow. So it's and sometimes like sometimes how that can actually occur is um, like taking a consultant for example. You they cut their hourly rate, but it doesn't actually cover their uh, living expenses, right? Um, that's on a very, you know, high level, but sometimes like if your cost of goods are going up and your price, final price is going down and mm -hmm. you're not comparing the two, uh, you just don't realize you're going to debt every, uh, every month, the more, and the more you sell, the more debt you get in. Right. That, that can happen as well. So that's where you, you gotta be careful about, um, uh, right now in terms of the price, um, you know, but are, but with price can you provide a new product that is more entry level? Like if you only did one-on-one -on -one services, like, like a trainer, do you do something like, hey, get five of your friends together. We'll do a Zoom session, each person in, the, in their own home, but mm -hmm. it's five persons. I'll give you all a discount, right? So then right. now at the entry level, you're still making money. They're getting something at a better price. It's a different product. Right. Right. And I know that this pivot that you speak of was probably very difficult for people who have been like they have legacy investment in their business. They've been in business so long and it probably took them a long time just to get like Apple Pay and Google Pay. And so those changes that generationally um, were, are necessary in order for you to keep up with what yeah. you know, customers want and how do you drive um you know, how do you keep your presence relevant in the marketplace, be competitive and still generate income? Um, I noticed that a lot of people took on a platform of community. And so they started just giving. Um, I know restaurants that had to close down and uh, they just basically, hey, just shop in the store. We can't open up. You know, this is what it is. 
but no one instantly thought about, I don't think any of our small businesses instantly thought about takeout, you know, you know, and, and then it, I'm not going to even talk about DoorDash and Uber Eats and things like that, because it was clearly discovered quickly that they were the, the, the percentages that they were charging was ridiculous. And so I'm so glad that that got cut in half. So let's, Let's try to, it's 6.44, so I want to just kind of see if there's any questions out there for Roy. Do you need, or do you want to know anything that you want to ask him? Is there anything, uh, anybody that's in the Zoom uh, room, or if there's anyone on our live that has a question for him in reference to, um, in reference to uh, the actual, uh, economics of things, branding. He's talked a lot about branding and I'm, I'm really glad that you did that. Uh, people aren't, people don't, I don't know, for some reason connect economics business, business with branding, but they should, but the power of it. And um, there is a lot coming out around individuals who say one thing and they're doing another. People are calling them out. People are screenshotting. People are, you know what I'm saying? People are calling them out. So it's uh, really interesting to see um, how people are really like standing up and saying, nope, you're saying this. It would have been something else if the woman who wrote the LinkedIn, I think I saw that LinkedIn post, if there had been something alter, you know, some alternate thing going on on her private pages. So, you know, yeah. I get it. I definitely get it. So do we yeah. have any questions? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one example perfectly. Mm -hmm. That was a historic example of that was, uh, you know, I'm going to date myself now, but. <laughs> You're not old. Oh my gosh. I know I'm older than you. Oh my God. Stop. <laughs> well, well, I think it was like the early nineties. Um, there was uh, the airlines started doing this campaign because they were trying to do targeted campaigns, right? And they started doing targeted campaigns to the LGBTQ uh, community. And then they got called out because they say, oh, you want to market to us, but you don't have domestic partnership. You don't provide any benefits. You don't mm -hmm. do uh, this. And they, and it turned out to be a PR disaster for them. Right, right. So it can backfire, like, you know, if you know, a whole demographic can really like mess you up. A whole yeah. demographic can mess up your whole business um, and put you in a bad light. But that's why I believe that crisis plans for your um, business, your business financial plan, crisis plans for all of that, um, uh, for all of areas of business is needed. Um, if, if you didn't realize it other than, you know, this moment, you should know now going forward that you need a crisis plan and it's going to have to cover everything, especially if you have to pivot. What does that look like? What do you, you know, what do you want to see? Um, and uh, how is it going to change the way you, you know, drive, in, drive revenue? Like, is it going to drive revenue up? Is it going to just be something that's going to be able to keep you going? Those types of things. So, um, I'm, I'm seeing if anybody has a question. Does anybody on the Zoom call have a question at all for Roy? All right, I'm waiting three seconds. That's the rule. You got to wait three seconds to see if anybody has something. Um, and I don't see any questions coming in. So what I would love to do, Roy, to wrap us up is the top three um, takeaways, takeaways or nuggets that you could drop on everybody. Um, before we wrap up the night, um, that would be really appreciated. Uh, and they can take this um, or leave it, um, but I hope they take it because you really give a lot of great advice. And by the way, if you all want to meet with Roy separately, we'll talk about that at the end. He'll be able to give you um, his information or we'll email it out or share it out. Yeah. So number one, again, you know, talk about your brand, like uh, really think, why do people want to work with you? and go figure out what you stand for and start going through all your social media and figure out, is this what you're portraying? And if it's not what you're portraying, take the, the stuff that isn't down and start posting the things that are. Okay. That's number one, all right? Number two is, um, you know, it's all about relationships. So um, one thing I will say is, you know, if you're going out, to meet new clients and 
the you don't want to be that guy like let's say you're a consultant you go to some networking uh, event mm -hmm. you start approaching someone and then and then just saying hey i'm so so this is what i sell are you interested or do, or, do you have any needs that's not building a relationship so if you need to especially right now when people really want uh to give business to people they know and like you know meeting someone think about it this way what would you do and say if you're going out to try to meet a new friend today mm. that you do business with use that as your guiding light in terms of how you talk to people um and you know you have to assess your business how is it going to be affected by social distancing covid really think hard and figure out how it impacts you i would do that has to be number 1 and then if you figure out it really does affect you a lot you need to figure out is there ways to pivot so that you go from a, a nice to have business to a must have or somehow change it so that you're easier to work with because it can't be business as normal because it's everything has changed um the other thing is I'll, I'll end off with this is relationships relationship relationships you know if you got long term clients now's the time just to simply call them and see how they're doing okay you know not a sales call and you know you don't know what someone's going through so like people like you don't know how they're affected you don't know if they're dealing with kind of um, anxiety, you just don't know. And sometimes just that friendly voice at a time like this is gonna make so much more of a meaningful impact in both their lives and how they view you so that when things turn around, you're gonna to be top of mind. And why wouldn't you? Because if the other way came, uh, was true, wouldn't you do the same, right? Right, all right. Well, those are all great tips. This has been a great conversation. And um, as usual, Roy, you do not disappoint. <laughs> you do not disappoint. And um, uh, there's a question in, he, in there. It says, uh, uh, Marcy, she asked, I'm not a business owner, but your information was very interesting and well presented. And we're going to um, share out how to reach out to Roy. Uh, we have his contact information. So if you want to tap into him on his uh, his definitely his beautiful mind of uh, branding and financial uh, planning. Uh, we would be able to connect you with him directly. So that way you can continue the conversation. He is very much so uh, open to those conversations and hopefully whatever we were able to share out tonight and what information he shared out tonight, we were able to uh, enlighten you or, you know, be, bring something back top of mind that you may have not thought about in a long time. But it's all about, you know, um, bringing something good to the world and making sure that um, at the end of the day, we're sharing information, we're building community, we're strengthening relationships, we're using our voice, we're pushing for change, and we're standing on, we're standing in the gap. So that is all, um, that we want to make sure that we've done for you and we want to continue these conversations whether they're they're light conversations or whether they're difficult ones but I want to thank you Roy for being a partner and a great great um, associate that we have come to know and really love and appreciate you just showed up for us in such great ways so uh, we are going to wrap up this evening thank you all for joining us uh, whether you joined us live via a watch party or whatever and we look you can always come back and watch this recording well it'll it, since it streams live on facebook you can always come back to it and uh we just want to thank you all for joining us tonight my name is shelly willis i'm the ceo and founder of redefining you foundation keep redefining thank you thank you everyone